Recap. I, 24 male, and my wife, 24, recently had an infant daughter. She's the best thing to ever happen to my wife and me, and we couldn't be more thrilled to have our little bundle of joy. She recently got sick while staying with her grandparents, my in-laws, while my wife and I took a work trip. For context, my in-laws are really big into LifeWave X39. It's some patch that supposedly helps regrow stem cells by reflecting light rays back into your body, allowing your body to produce more stem cells to fight off disease and sickness. If you ask me, it sounds like snake oil, and my wife agrees, calling it a pyramid scheme. Now, I've tried doing research on X39. They contain no medication, special UV rays, or anything. They're literally just an overpriced sticker with an air bubble. But my wife and I have made it very clear that we wanted no part in X39, nor did we want our daughter to have it. Even if it's fake, we wanted no part in it, and on the off chance it did something, I didn't want our daughter to be used as their lab rat or guinea pig. Now, before we left our daughter with my in-laws, we provided them with some infant medication, just in case she got sick. You can never be too safe, you know. Well, we returned home from the work trip early because our daughter wasn't getting any better, so we picked her up and went home. We were going to give her a bath, and in the process of taking her jacket off, we found an X39 patch on her arm. Upon finding it, we immediately called her parents and demanded to know why she had a patch on her. Her parents tried saying, It's safe for babies. We even ordered the ones for ages 7 and younger, and that it's practically medication. They failed to listen. My wife was on the phone with them for over an hour. While I don't know the exact length the conversation went to, I know it at least ended with her screaming, You are never going to see my daughter again, and if you attempt to come to my house, we will call the police, before hanging up. That was three days ago now, and we've had several missed calls from family members, her parents, her siblings, and even family friends, all saying that we overreacted and that they were just trying to help. Update number one. Am I the idiot for not allowing my in-laws to see my daughter? About a month ago, I made this post ranting about my in-laws' weird obsession with a, for lack of a better term, cult regarding stem cell regeneration through patches, which clearly isn't a real thing. There's been some development on that end, and while I'm confident things will likely end here, I wanted to give a quick update for those who may have been curious. After my wife essentially cut ties with them and we all received a million phone calls and text messages from family and friends, things quieted down for about a week or two. We started having my sister watch our daughter instead when we had to work. However, we haven't had another out-of-town trip since the initial post. Through those couple of weeks, we never really heard anything beyond a couple of supposed crap-talking posts on Facebook complaining about us, but I can't seem to find the posts. We thought things were, probably, hopefully, going to end there. But boy, were we wrong. And this is quite the jump from the last post. My wife and I were visited by CPS about two weeks ago or so, after they received concerning calls about supposed child abuse and negligence within the household. Of course, nothing like that happened, and the caseworker was quick to see that. We asked who'd reported her, and while she couldn't say anything, we suspected it was from her parents. We were completely helpful and cooperative with the caseworker, and after she left that night, my wife called her mom up and asked if she was the one who called CPS. Surprisingly, her mother took full accountability, but not so surprisingly, tried to spin it around in her favour, claiming that she did it for our own good because our daughter was sick and she wasn't getting any better. When she was there, so clearly we were doing something awful as parents. Kids get sick, it happens, but in-laws are against flu shots. Yet they're willing to shell out thousands of dollars for some supposed stem cell regeneration sticker. The hypocrisy and irony in their BS is unmatched. My wife didn't really know how to react to that, so she basically told her mom to go screw herself and she wanted nothing to do with her again. I know I saw a few comments on the last post saying maybe we shouldn't have cut them out entirely. Still, now I'm starting to question why we didn't cut them out years ago before our daughter was even a thought in our heads. About a week after the first audit, my mother-in-law showed up at our house on my day off while my wife was at work and essentially demanded to see our daughter, forcing her way into our home by pushing past my arm. When I told her to get the heck out of my house, she had no business marching in here like that, she essentially told me that I was unfit to be a parent because I was depriving my daughter of help she desperately needed because she's clearly a very sick child. My daughter is perfectly healthy right now and in fact has had no stuffy nose and no high temperature, nothing. I told my mother-in-law straight up that she was insane. I went off on her about how she lied to us, went against our wishes 
dared to call and lie to CPS and then showed up at our house unannounced and uninvited and marched herself inside, as well as everything about her X39 LifeWave BS. We argued there for a while before I finally got so fed up that I told her to leave my house before I called the police. She stormed out of the house and, in true Karen fashion, said, This isn't over, before slamming my door. I immediately called my wife, who was, of course, irate. The following morning, we filed a restraining order at the courthouse from her mom and dad because they were clearly not in their right mindset. The caseworker had to audit us a few more times as per their guidelines over the past two weeks, and yesterday was her last day when she informed us that we were doing good and she was sorry for the trouble they caused. We kept her up to speed on the life wave crap, the showing up unannounced, and the restraining order. Though she couldn't really take a side, she seemed apologetic. But my wife and I are pretty livid. We started looking at houses in another state to get as far away from the in-laws as possible. Our company has offices out there, so it's entirely possible we could just be transferred. We're crossing our fingers that all goes well, the restraining order gets filed soon enough, and we'll get a place clear across the country so that this will hopefully be my last update. Wow, that took a turn. Good for you and your wife. And that CPS worker sounds nice. I wish there were criminal charges for baseless complaints like this. There's probably a law that would allow it somewhere, but at least that process being over is good, and invest in some security cameras for your door. This is next level unhinged. Moving far away sounds like an excellent idea at this point. I wouldn't put it past her mother to try kidnapping your daughter. She seems quite insane enough to do that. Thank you for the update. Please do update again if you get a chance to move far, far away. And don't give the new location info to anyone who might tell any of the Crazy Pants family, or they'll probably call CPS in the new state. These flat earth, supplement pushing people are so stuck in their conspiracy theory cults that they will do anything just to be right, which they never are. There is nothing you can say or do to ever change their mind even if you can prove them wrong right then and there. Any relationship with them is hopeless. I'm sorry you feel you must move just to get away from it. Good luck to you guys. I have a feeling this isn't the last you'll hear from them. Keep a record of everything she does so that you can use it in court if you must. Update 2. Am I the idiot for not allowing my in-laws to see my daughter? After my in-laws called CPS on us for no discernible reasons other than we forbid them from seeing our daughter, things mostly quieted down. Some of you suggested that we should do more than get a restraining order, so we bought some security cameras and had them installed all around our property. And our neighbours, who are pretty good friends of ours, were in the loop for the most part, and any time we had to go somewhere, not only did we have video cameras recording every time someone entered our driveway, displayed directly on our phones, our neighbours kept us updated too. She stopped coming around for the first few months after she called CPS on us, but just the month before last, as we were preparing to move, my in-laws somehow got word we planned on moving states and attempted to block our driveway as her dad tried blocking the front door. I'm not sure what their plan was there, because we have a back door and an extra side door leading from the kitchen, but I digress. Her mom blocked the driveway, stopping our U-Haul or car from leaving the property, and wouldn't budge even after we told them we would call the police. They told us they'd move if we told them where we were moving to, but my wife told them that wasn't happening, and they had 10 minutes to leave or we'd be calling the police. My neighbour came over during the commotion, but my in-laws still wouldn't budge. My daughter was crying during all of this, and my wife was trying to console her. My neighbour and I were attempting to remove my father-in-law from the doorway, but he wouldn't move. Eventually, my wife called the police, and I'm guessing another neighbour called them as well because they responded within mere minutes. My in-laws kept screaming that we were taking their rightful grandchild away and that we'd all be damned to burn in the bad place for this, but honestly, that just made me laugh. The police kept asking them to leave, but they wouldn't. Eventually, they were arrested for refusing to leave, and the police were nice enough to call a tow truck for us to be able to back out of the driveway. Lo and behold, as the police were handcuffing my in-laws, they both had on those X39 patches, and even the police questioned them about it. But whatever, what's done is done. We were finally able to leave and move on to new adventures. We've been settled in our new house for over a month and enjoy it immensely. No word from her in-laws, and they have no idea where we are. We have them blocked, but we'll eventually get messages from unknown numbers or Facebook accounts asking where we moved, but there's no way they're that foolish to believe we'll actually tell them.
Luckily, neither my last date nor this one has any grandparents' rights, so we're in the clear there. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully, this is my last update. Your in-laws are insane, to put it mildly. I'm glad you got some distance from all that craziness. Be prepared for your nutty in-laws to hire a PI to track you down. If they have money to waste on their pyramid nonsense, then they will come up with money for that. But I truly hope I'm just being pessimistic and that this is the end. A friend had a similar issue with in-laws. After they moved to Oregon, they told a family friend that they suspected was feeding the parents info about how much they were enjoying Portland, Maine. Parents picked up and moved to Maine while they were 3,000 miles away. We still laugh about how incensed his parents must have been when they realized it. That was a stroke of genius. Love it. Suggestion. Post fake photos of a very identifiable place far from where you relocated to. This will give them the impression you've moved there without saying it directly. They'll spend time and resources trying to find you there. Alaska. Alaska is good. Hawaii is as well, but they might actually enjoy being there. Alaska is gorgeous, but not convenient to reach, and there are few good tourist stuff outside of a few types and areas. Fairbanks would make a lovely spot for them to visit. I totally support this. Wow, OP, maybe those patches have something that leached the brain cells from their heads. Glad you got away. I, 24 male, have an infant son with my ex, 28 female, and things are complicated with her. We dated for eight months. She left me for her ex and didn't tell me she was pregnant. It was her sister who told me and she told me the baby was mine and my ex knew about it. I reached out and told her I wanted to be a parent to my kid. She retaliated by marrying her ex and they told me he would be the father. I told them I would file with the courts when the baby was born to establish DNA and custody. My son was born and they did everything to keep me away, including adding her husband to the birth certificate and giving the child his last name which at the time of his birth was just the husband's name. My ex changed hers last month before our court date. They also tried to make my son a junior for the husband, first and middle name, but something changed, so his name is another form of her husband's name. DNA proved I was the father. The judge ordered us to attend two mediation and therapy sessions together, me and my ex. We didn't reach an agreement because she clearly wanted me out of the picture and her husband to raise my son as his own. The judge did not take kindly to that. In my court petition, I said I wanted my son to have my last name, not his stepfather's. The outcome from the court was 50-50 physical and legal custody. My son's last name was changed, as was his first name because my ex's husband was bitter he didn't get his junior in my son. We are to communicate about our son and nothing else through an app. Neither of us pays child support. We both have to make decisions for him. I'm also on the birth certificate now. My ex hates me for all that I did, but the sorest point seems to be the last name. Her mom called me, and I'd only met her twice while I was with my ex. But she called me and told me I was a petty little kid who was playing daddy when her grandson deserved a real man for a father. He had, has one in the husband, and I should have left them to raise him together so he could have the stability of one home. She told me that denying that wonderful man the right to pass his name onto a child he swore to love as his own is awful and that my ex, as the mom, should share a name with her child. Then, I had one of my ex's friends come up to me while I was out getting groceries and she called me Patty for fighting for my son's last name. My ex also brought it up during our last exchange. She told me she hoped I was damn proud of myself for fighting over the name when she had her husband's name too and she wanted it to be their family name and I denied their son that. She said, their son. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Why would you be any less deserving of fatherhood than your ex's husband? You fought against multiple obstacles to make sure you could be there for your son. And why should a man who is not related have your kid be given his name? Sounds like they were an infertile couple who broke up long enough for her to get pregnant with OP. The ex probably cannot have his own children. Because why is the mother acting like this man is a saint? It's not like OP walked away and refused to raise the kid. He's trying to stand up and take care of his kid like he's meant to. OP did nothing wrong. This random guy is pulling power moves. And for what? They haven't been married a year. He's proved nothing. He can have his own damn kids and give his name to them. Everyone is acting crazy. This was my first thought too. Good for you for fighting for your son. She can't just erase you from her past. Be mindful not to be negative about his mom to him when he gets older, though. 
I'm sure she is, and that will come to bite her in the butt when he gets older. When parents fight, kids suffer. That wonderful man can prove his wonderfulness in other ways. A name shouldn't make that much of a difference. My boyfriend, 28, and I, 25 female, have just wrapped up a very long cross-country road trip. While traveling, we naturally encounter traffic jams. He put on the car's hazard lights while braking during some more abrupt stops. I brought it up that I find it weird that he does this and maybe it isn't necessary. I guess beyond the fact that I've never heard of someone else doing this, I worry about other drivers around us. I told him, what if the person behind you takes it the wrong way? But that's probably me overanalyzing. I don't know. It seems like a bit of overkill. He got frustrated with me for being a backseat driver and asked me to stop nitpicking, paraphrasing his driving. I get that. I guess I just still think it's weird. So, am I the idiot? Do people think this is normal? For clarification, we both live in the US, he grew up in the Midwest, and I'm from the East Coast. During our drive, we were mostly on major highways. You are the idiot. I drive professionally and see this all the time and do it myself when the situation calls for it. It's not weird at all and very much appreciated at times. It tells the car behind that you're not just braking to adjust your speed a bit, but that something unusual is going on. He's right, you're being a backseat driver and nitpicking when he's doing right. Exactly, it lets other drivers know traffic is stopping abruptly. Especially with all the idiots out there not paying attention, it's super useful. I'm wondering if he's travelled a little more than you and has had more experience with that sort of thing. Hazard lights are for hazards, like abruptly stopping traffic. Maybe try to keep an open mind and learn a little instead of just digging in your heels and doing a, well, I don't do it, so it's weird. That mindset is super weird to me, to be honest. This comment section is insane. Jesus Christ, y'all. According to the highway code, you should mainly use hazard lights when your vehicle is stationary on the road and a potential hazard to other road users. This can occur if your vehicle has broken down, if you've had to stop because of another obstruction ahead, or if you've pulled over for another emergency reason. Seriously, I've never heard of or seen people do this in my life, yet apparently everyone here says you're supposed to do it. I'm pretty sure you are not supposed to do it in most, if not all, states. You're not the idiot. That's not a normal thing to do. People will think he's driving a car with a mechanical problem. The brake lights tell me you're braking. Your boyfriend is wrong.